Many fascinating discoveries have been made in the last 20 years that have illuminated Neanderthals in great detail. However, their evolutionary origins and how precisely they became extinct continue to remain hotly debated questions. In this video, I will try to answer these two big questions by covering all of the archaeological evidence in a chronological fashion. We will first explore the earliest evidence of their existence between 800,000 to 400,000 years ago, before mapping out their journey across Europe and Asia as they settled large areas of the two continents. We will then go over the evidence of the most recent signs of Neanderthal activity and analyze it for any clues it may hold regarding why Neanderthals went extinct. Scientists are unsure when Neanderthals diverged from Homo sapiens, but they estimate that it might have taken place between 800,000 to 315,000 years ago. Deepening this mystery is the fact that scientists are unsure who the common ancestor of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens were, and can only make guesses that it might have been either Homo heidelbergensis, Homo antecessor, or another species. The earliest fossils that we know of that exhibit Neanderthal-type features date back to around 430,000 years ago. However, the fossils that have been undeniably classified as Neanderthals date back to between 130,000 to 40,000 years ago. While Homo sapiens were evolving in Africa at around 400,000 years ago, Neanderthals were also evolving in Eurasia. Soon afterwards, these proto-Neanderthals firmly established themselves in Europe. Between 337,000 and 300,000 years ago, there stood a prehistoric campsite upon the shores of a lake, near what is now the modern town of Schoeningen in northern Germany. Either Neanderthals or members from the Homo heidelbergensis species once crowded around the area and processed meat from elephants, birds, and fish, whom were hunted and brought over from nearby meadows and forests. Many of the men in the group clutched wooden sticks with sharpened ends that they had used in a recent hunt. Due to the frequent use of hunting methods that involved the killing of prey at really close ranges, many of the men likely had sustained moderate to serious injuries at various points in their rough lives. Neanderthals were able to tolerate these rigorous hunts due to their immense strength and stocky skeletal frames that were more robust than Homo sapiens. Neanderthals soon spread to live across a vast swath of Eurasia, from the regions that are now the present-day countries of England and Portugal in the west, to the Altai Mountains of Siberia to the east. On the Iberian and Italian peninsulas, Neanderthals acclimated themselves to a warm, temperate, and forested environment, while in Siberia they adapted to the cold steppes. Neanderthals throughout their varied regions of habitation exhibited immense diversity. However, no matter where they were, they possessed the same upright gait and manual abilities as Homo sapiens. Unlike Homo sapiens, however, Neanderthals had massive and bowed thigh and forearm bones, which enabled a far greater degree of muscularity despite Neanderthals being about the same height as Homo sapiens from the time period. Neanderthals likely evolved these anatomical features in reaction to the extreme cold conditions that existed in Europe at the time. Between about 150,000 to 90,000 years ago, Homo sapiens and Neanderthals began living alongside each other as Homo sapiens began migrating out of Africa and into Asia and Europe. 124,000 years ago, there lived a Neanderthal in Europe that carried Homo sapiens DNA in them, even though Homo sapiens are not known to have existed in the region until around 60,000 years ago. Coinciding somewhat with these migratory movements were the dramatic climate changes that occurred around 100,000 years ago. These events may have led to the fracturing of Neanderthal groups and the stunting of their population growth. During the climate change events that involved extreme cold, animals that the Neanderthals hunted could have seen drops in their populations, which would in turn have meant less food and less population stability and growth for the Neanderthals. Neanderthals are considered to have been very reliant on meat sources for food, so any significant drop in animal populations could have had dire effects on their populations. 
Starting at around 50,000 years ago in present-day Israel and the Middle East, significant interbreeding occurred between Neanderthals and the Homo sapiens that were migrating out of Africa. The implication of this mixing in the Middle East is that between 1 and 4% of the genes of people today, whose ancestor groups developed outside of Sub-Saharan Africa, are Neanderthal genes. This only applies to individuals who largely trace their ancestry outside of Africa, such as Europeans, Asians, and Australians, as Neanderthals are not known to have ever gone to Africa. Starting at around 60,000 years ago, the population densities of Neanderthal groups, which were already low to begin with, and made even lower due to climate changes, began to decrease even further. Likewise, this development led to a decline in genetic diversity. These events were followed by the entry of Homo sapiens into Europe at around 50,000 years ago. The newcomers possibly settled on lands that once were occupied by Neanderthals. Many groups of Neanderthals scattered across Eurasia were likely never accustomed to making contact with other Neanderthal groups in their regions. At this point, with the declining population densities of Neanderthal groups, even if the groups made attempts to find other groups in their regions, they would have run into great difficulty given the geographically isolated nature of their locations. This situation resulted in many groups not mating and breeding with each other. The sizes of groups began to get so small that members likely either inadvertently or knowingly began to breed with members that they were related to. Such activities would have fueled the overall decline of the health of the species, which in turn would have lowered their numbers further. Making matters worse, Neanderthals were now unable to resettle favored areas they once roamed, as many had now become occupied by Homo sapiens. This lack of access to important resources likely would have made it even more difficult for Neanderthals to adapt to the changing climate and replenish their numbers. Over the course of a few thousand years, the numbers of Neanderthals continued to drop, reaching levels far below the ability of the species to recover. In the midst of their declining numbers, the Neanderthals also bred with Homo sapiens all across Europe. Numerous fossils of early humans have been found that appear mostly to be Homo sapiens, but yet possess certain prominent features that are characteristic of Neanderthals. For example, a skull from a site in present-day Czech Republic has an occipital bun, but otherwise appears to be mostly Homo sapiens, indicating that the individual may have been a Neanderthal-Homo sapiens hybrid. Some archaeologists have pushed back against these observations, but genetic analysis of ancient DNA extracted from some of the fossils have revealed trace elements of Neanderthal DNA. Small Neanderthal groups seeking to avoid inbreeding may readily have interbred with Homo sapiens, if at the time the behavioral characteristics of the two species were not too dissimilar. Though acts like these would have avoided inbreeding, they also likely hastened the demise of the Neanderthals, as their small groups continued to shrink as more and more hybrid individuals were born, and Homo sapien populations continued to grow while receiving waves of migration from Africa. At a Neanderthal burial site at Saint-Césaire, tools from the Chatel Peronian toolkit were found alongside Neanderthal remains. The toolkit has long been associated with Homo sapiens, due to its more complex nature compared to Neanderthal toolkits which have historically been seen as lacking in sophistication. Due to how close the tools were found to the Neanderthal remains, many archaeologists have argued that they were created by, or at least owned by Neanderthals. Despite this though, many other archaeologists have long questioned the association. However, with the recent application of new technological breakthroughs in the field of archaeology, along with recent archaeological discoveries, more and more researchers are becoming convinced that Neanderthals made the tools. This conclusion has led many researchers to now view Neanderthals as being much smarter and creative than they had once thought. Most fascinating of all is the fact that this toolkit only appeared after the arrival of Homo sapiens into Europe, which has led many researchers to theorize that this is direct physical evidence of contact between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. Researchers have further theorized that Neanderthals possibly learned how to make their own versions of the new tools that they were encountering the Homo sapiens using. Alternatively, the Neanderthals also could have traded for these tools. Some of the last traces of Neanderthal existence that we know of, based on fossil evidence, comes from small areas of Western Europe and the Near East. 
At about 40,000 years ago, Neanderthals ceased to exist in the fossil record. However, some of the last holdouts of the species may have even existed 28,000 years ago, based on findings at Gorham's cave in Gibraltar, Spain. In the cave, there has been found evidence of fire usage and stone tools associated with Neanderthals. A geometric pattern etched into one of the walls of the cave is also considered to be possible evidence of Neanderthal art. Global sea levels were lower during the estimated time of Neanderthal occupation, and as a result, the cave was in the midst of a coastal plain replete with sand dunes, marshes, and lagoons, as well as scattered patches of trees and shrubs. In turn, this region would have been filled with monk seals, beach dolphins, and mussels, food sources that all would have been consumed by Neanderthals. Eventually though, the deadly effects of extreme cold weather caused by climate change caught up to the region, killing or driving off many animals and Neanderthals used for food. Species of animals adapted for cold weather migrating into the region from the north would not have been enough to offset these effects. Stressors on Neanderthal resources at Gibraltar likely chipped away at their population to the point that it fell below the levels of recovery, leading to inbreeding and eventually extinction. Altogether, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens are estimated to have coexisted in Eurasia for approximately 6,000 years before Neanderthals went extinct. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed my documentary, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash world chronicles.